I wanted to give everyone a tour of the language arts packets from A Gentle Feast. So I created these packets to help me implement a Charlotte Mason approach to language arts in my homeschool. Um, I found studying Charlotte Mason's methods that her approach to language arts was so different than what I had been using. I had very much a traditional approach when I first started homeschooling, a separate book for spelling and a separate book for grammar and a separate book for vocabulary and a second book for writing. And I just felt like we were going all over the place and it was taking forever. And so um, when I read Charlotte Mason's approach, I was like, wow, this is so beautiful. This is so simple. This must be too easy. How's this gonna work? And I also found that I wasn't really getting the results I wanted, mainly because I wasn't being consistent. So one of Charlotte Mason's approaches to language arts is the um, concept of something called copy work, where students are copying beautiful passages of literature and they internalize good language, grammar, spelling, punctuation, those kind of things. Well, she talks about a student picking their own passage from what they've been reading from the week. Well, I found it was taking us forever to find a passage then some weeks I was forgetting to do it. And well, no wonder I'm not getting the results that I wanted. So I realized I had to create something that was just open and go, here we are, we're ready to do language arts. And so I created these language arts packets, mainly for my benefit, but then I saw the benefit in my children's lives from doing uh, consistent copy work, which is again, copying in your best handwriting, a beautiful passage, dictation, which is where a child studies the words in a passage, and then they spell them from memory. They write out the passage as the parent reads the passage to them. And then Charlotte Mason didn't start formal grammar until age 10. So I include some really simple beginning grammar concepts before then. And then um, her approach was kind of this slow building of grammar. Um, oftentimes, grammar curriculums kind of push too much at a child from a very young age. And so they have to kind of um, do that kill and drill repetition year after year with these grammar concepts because children aren't developmentally ready. They don't have that analytical reasoning developed until around age 10. So Charlotte Mason was so smart in her view of children um, to really understand the grammar concepts before then. So um, in my packet, you'll see it's this very gentle introduction to kind of Get those foundational grammar skills in and it's not this drill and kill it's the slow and gentle buildup um, that really does have a greater effect than trying to push too much on a child so let me go through the different forms and show you how the language art packets are set up from a gentle feast so the first one is the form one packet form one is grades one through three about i say a child should be reading um hold on one second should be reading consistently uh, by the time you start one of these packets. So if they're not, um, you know, keep doing your reading and your handwriting, but oh wait, that's the wrong one. Wait until they're reading consonant, vowel, consonant kind of words consistently before starting this language arts packets, because it includes phonics review, but also includes spelling and they have to be reading well in order to do that. Okay, so the table of contents kind of shows you some of the phonics review in the grammar concepts for the sage. And then each week, they have a copy work passage. So this is for the whole week. They're gonna do a little bit each day, quality over quantity. And then their spelling words for the week come from this passage. So Charlotte Mason, and I love this approach because she always says students have to be curious. They have to have a captivating idea that captures their attention. They don't wanna learn a bunch of rote words that don't make any sense. And they just have to memorize a bunch of rules. The words have to be beautiful and meaningful. So a word like lady um, is kind of a weird word for a beginning uh, reader maybe. And so, but it's interesting. It's in this, uh, London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Um, and, and it looks different than the other words. And so it's interesting. It captures the student's attention. But then I also included some common sight words for this age group. So from when I taught school, you know, sight words are words that are difficult to spell phonetically. And so students just kind of need to learn them by sight. So there's these interesting words and these common sight words that students practice every week. And then these are going to be in the dictation passage, which I'll show you in a minute. So each day they have three things for language arts. The first one is copy work, five to 10 minutes. The second is practicing their spelling words, about the same, five to 10 minutes. And then there's one more thing. So you really can finish language arts in about, well, way less than 30 minutes. As opposed to most kind of language arts curriculums where you're doing 
a whole bunch of different things. Like I said, I was doing it first with all these different workbooks and it was taking us an hour to do all of language arts. So that is doing a disservice to the child. They can only pay attention and give their full um, best work for a few minutes. So a few minutes and then you're moving on. So each day they have copy work, spelling, and then one other thing. So let me show you what that other thing is. So one day there's drawing. And if you buy the full curriculum in the online resources, there's drawing links um, with video tutorials on how to draw some of these things. But if you only have the language arts packet, you can easily Google a tutorial for some of these drawings. Um, and then the next day three, there's a composition assignment. And at this age, you would write this down for the child, but it's teaching them that when I'm telling a story, it's going to lead to this writing later on. They can see that oh, written down words are just what I'm saying, but now someone's writing them down, which is an important skill. And then, like I said, there's either a phonics review kind of focus, or there's a beginning grammar concept the next day. And then the last day of the week is dictation. So the blanks here are those spelling words that they've been studying for the week. So London Bridge is falling down. So they've been studying down. So I would say London Bridge is falling down. And I would wait for my child to write the word down. And then I would keep going. This is going to lead to the advanced dictation that they're going to do later on. So in this age, age they're just practicing those spelling words. All right, so let's jump ahead to form two here, which is grades four through six. Again, there's a table of content. There isn't a fourth grade grammar that only fourth graders should know and a grammar that only fifth graders should know and only sixth graders should know. So having a form where there's a wide variety here and I can show you how to customize this kind of on each end here. But again, it's these same grammar concepts they're going to see again, even if they had a fourth grade curriculum or a fifth grade curriculum or a sixth grade curriculum, they're gonna see subjects, verbs, all the parts of speech, right? Different punctuation every year. So um, it's fine just to jump in with whatever cycle you are currently doing. All right. So the um, packets for form one and form two do come in cursive or print font. So you could teach, you know, pick kind of what you want your child to do. Again, this, so this is Teddy Roosevelt's inaugural address. So sometimes the passages come from literature, from the books that they're reading, or sometimes it has to do with the historical time period, or sometimes it's just a beautiful passage of scripture or poetry or a song that um, is great for the child to copy. The passages don't line up every week. So just because they're doing Teddy Roosevelt's inaugural address in week one doesn't mean they have to be studying about Teddy Roosevelt in week one. They'll get to Teddy Roosevelt later on and education is the science of relations. So these kind of, oh look, the word relations isn't the thing. <laughs> um, these kind of connections like that will happen when your child is doing the copy work and then later learns about something or they learn about something and then a couple weeks later they do a copy work about it it's really neat to see because it's not about cramming information in right it's about these living ideas that are going to grow inside their mind okay so same thing for form two they have a copy work passage that's for the week so they're going to do a little bit of copy work each day then they're going to practice their spelling words now the spelling words are going to come from this copy work passage but in form two you and your child are going to decide how much of the copy work passage you're going to want expect them to know from memory for dictation it is not going to be the whole thing at first, <laughs> especially if they're in fourth grade. It might just be the first sentence. Start small. Or maybe this is a very long sentence up to the semicolon here. So you and your child will look at the passage. Our relations with other powers of the world are important. You'll decide what words they need to know how to spell. I'm thinking relations, power is important. They probably don't know how to spell. And you're going to add those to this list of spelling words that your child's going to practice for the week. And then I'll explain dictation in a second. So every day, again, they have copy work. They have spelling and they have one other thing. That one other thing is the same as in form one. So again, it's building these consistent routines. So there's not this drama of, do I have to do this today? And well, yesterday I did this thing. Why do I have to do this thing? It's no, we're doing, we do these consistent things week after week. It just kind of eliminates all the mental stress of having to choose to do it. Charlotte Mason talk about training our wills with our habits here. So anyway, that's why this consistency is so important. But then there's a drawing, and again, there's those drawing links um, online if you have that. Then there's a composition assignment. At this age, you can transition to them writing it themselves. Um, and then there's a beginning grammar lesson. Sometimes there's one day, some days there's two days of grammar at this age, so there's two days here. And then um, I do give optional assignments from a book called Grammarland for sixth grade if you feel like your child needs a little bit more than what's here. And then the last day, again, is dictation. But instead of 
in form one, where they were just doing the blanks, in form two, you're going to read the passage and they're going to write it from memory. So that's why I said at the beginning, just start small and build up. The goal would be by the end of sixth grade to do that entire copywork passage from memory. That would be fantastic. So don't expect that early on. It, like I said, this is a really simple way to customize these packets for where your child is at. Just because your child is in fifth grade doesn't mean a fifth grade grammar book is going to be exactly where they're at, right? Children don't develop like that. And Charlotte Mason knew that. So this kind of form approach allows you that flexibility. And then the next week is the same thing. Copy work every day, spelling every day, and then what other thing to have those rhythms. So that is the form two language arts packet. Then for form three, I really wanted to give the kids more independence. So this is more of a weekly checklist of all they would need for language arts. Put it over here. Okay. So you can print the, um, the form three packets only come as a PDF. So you can print off what you need for your child. Okay, so again, they have a copy work passage for the week. I give them this and they will copy it into a notebook. So there's no print or cursive font with lines anymore. They're in junior high, so they can handle just looking at a passage in type text and then copying it into a notebook. Then they're gonna pick what words out of that passage they, again that they need to study for the week for spelling. Then there's a grammar lesson. And for form three, I use the supplemental curriculum called analytical grammar. You can follow a three-year schedule, a two-year schedule, or a one-year schedule. So depending on when you're going into form three, it allows you that flexibility. So you're gonna follow their schedule and their plan here, but it gives your child a space to check it off. Again, there's a drawing at this age, you know, it's, I kind of leave that up to the child. Some kids love it, some kids hate it, and it stresses them out, so don't worry about it. <laughs> then there's a composition assignment. The composition assignments are going to get more challenging in this room. They're gonna be writing about different genres of writing now. They're going to be expected to write an essay kind of thing. There is a supplemental composition book that can kind of give them some lessons and there are some writing lessons in here as well. They have two days of grammar in form three and then dictation is again, that whole passage from memory. And again, the beginning of form three, you might wanna start small and work your way up to where they could do the entire passage. So here is the copywork passage for the week. Like I said, it's type text and they are going to copy it into a notebook. It's great at this age to point out some of the grammar concepts that they've been learning. So like this one has a lot of quotation marks, be a great thing to point out um, and work together with them that way. But sometimes there's also a link like on how to write a limerick or something like that, or how to write a compare and contrast paper so that the students are able to kind of find that for themselves. The form four packet, which is grades 10 through 12 is very similar. All right, so let's look at that form four packet. So again, it's written for the student. Sometimes the poem is, or the passage is told, like sometimes the child at this age gets a choice. So let's say they're reading Hamlet, I would put choose your favorite passage from Hamlet. So, at, you know, in high school, they have a little bit more flexibility. It's not a complete free for all. Like I'm kind of saying pick, that way there's a variety. So they're not always picking a poem. Sometimes it's from a history book. Sometimes it's from a science book. So they get a variety of things that they're copying. And then for each cycle, there is a writing book that is um, assigned for high school. So they have to read a part of that. And then sometimes they have to do a writing exercise that goes with that. Then I've also included here space in high school for their weekly written narration. So this is part of their you know, language arts block is the writing that they do for their narrations. So um, I required one for each subject. So there's one for them here, their science notebook where they've narrated the reading for the week. If they go to the lab, they write about the lab for the week. And then I started having them do a final draft of one of their written narrations or this composition assignment. So they learn how to edit and how to write a paper that's gonna be you know, college or career type writing after that. Um, so here, here's an example. So North with the Spring is their nature reader. They're active, asked to pick a passage from that. They choose that themselves. Then there's the reading assignment from the composition book. There's writ written exercises. Then they have their written narrations and then they're gonna do their final draft. I also include rubrics in here. Um, to help you grade their papers for transcripts and things like that. So that is 
I mean, those are the language arts packets for Magenta Feast, as you can see. <laughs> There's a lot of different ages and a lot that's encompassing them, but it's really to give you the tools to make this super simple and to give you something that you can consistently use every day that is going to help your child um, learn these concepts of spelling and grammar and beautiful writing and punctuation and all those things, but do it in a way that is meaningful for the child and a way that makes sense for them developmentally and is developmentally appropriate, but continues from the time that they're in first grade up through 12th grade of using these same kind of skills and the same kind of pattern. So I hope that is helpful and gives you an idea of what's included in the language art packets for Magenta Peaks.